Being a home cook is hard. Every night is a ticking weeknight dinner time bomb. Maybe you get busy with work, doing chores around the house, wrangling some kids, or playing your favorite video game. Whatever it is, eventually that stomach growl hits. Except there's a problem. It's feeding time, but you have no idea what to make, there's no leftovers in the fridge, and you don't feel like running to the store, so you end up opening the delivery app and spending $30 on a single item that you swear used to be $10 a year or two ago. Well, in this video, I wanna show you the basic stir fry framework and how it can be applied to three different recipes because learning this framework really can change your life in the following four ways. One, you'll learn how to transform proteins, leftover vegetables, and basic pantry staples into 15 to 20 minute meals. Two, you'll never run out of ideas of what to make. Third, you can make healthy or high protein versions. For example, the Pad CU inspired dish I'll show you is 600 calories and 52 grams of protein. And fourth, stir fries make some of the best leftovers the next day. So it doesn't save you on one weeknight, but the next day too. So let's break it down. These are the five components that make up the stir fry framework. One, stir fry sauce, and these can be your favorite store-bought sauces, or in this video, I'll show you three homemade versions. And what's great about these is one, they're made with pantry stable ingredients like soy sauce or chili oil. And secondly, they can be mixed ahead of time and just stored in the fridge. Secondly, we have aromatics. This is your garlic, shallots, diced onion, lemongrass, or peppers. And all stir fry recipes generally have some type of aromatic base. Sometimes it's sauteed in the wok, or sometimes it's added in the sauce. Third, we have the protein. Beef, chicken, pork, tofu, eggs, seafood, plant-based meat, it doesn't really matter. Feel free to use whatever you have. Fourth, we have vegetables, and these are vegetables used as a base of the stir fry. My favorite is probably baby broccoli, but carrots, bell pepper, eggplant, zucchini, snow peas, kale, onions, it can be anything. And fifth, we have the starch base. This is optional, but ask yourself, how are you gonna serve your stir fried proteins and vegetables? It could be over rice with ramen noodles, rice noodles, spring rolls. You can make a sandwich out of it for all I care. Now, if you have to start all of these components from scratch every night, it will seem like a lot to do and you are less likely to implement it. But if you link these components with a habit and implement them into your life, this is where it becomes truly life-changing. And here's an example for each. For the sauce, maybe each month you find a new stir fry sauce to make or buy at the store. For the aromatics, maybe you always keep your garlic, onions, and white pepper stocked up in the pantry. For the proteins, try thinly slicing raw meat and freezing it or braising a chuck roast and freezing that. Both I'll show you in this video. For the vegetables, try to find a new vegetable at the store that looks interesting or maybe just always keep a bag of frozen vegetables on hand that you can stir fry. And fifth, for the starch base, maybe every Sunday you make a double or triple batch of rice that you can use throughout the week. In life, getting started is generally the hardest part. So you need to be able to do these things before you even plan to make the stir fry. You can implement one or all five of these. And the idea is you aren't planning these, but these are just things that you do without thinking, like brushing your teeth or tying your shoes. And once you do that, you'll be able to unlock these recipes on any weeknight when previously it didn't feel like you had the energy. So with that being said, let's hop into recipe number one. This Cantonese black pepper beef is kind of a modified version from Chinese Cooking Demystified's video where they outline three different approaches to making this sauce. And I highly recommend checking out their video as I do do a slightly simplified version here, but the sauce is so peppery and lip smacking good. It's one of those dishes you can't stop eating. It's so like peppery and tingly. You just wanna keep eating it really fast, kind of, kind of like I did. Using the framework, these are our components. For the sauce, we have the black pepper stir fry sauce. Our aromatics are gonna be garlic and shallot. Our protein is gonna be flank steak. The vegetables are bell pepper and onion. And lastly, the starch base is gonna be some rice. To start, let's make the sauce. Set a bowl over a scale and add 50 grams of the Lee Kum Ki black pepper sauce, 10 grams of chili oil with fermented soybeans. Now, these are two specialty items specifically for this sauce, but both I was able to find at my local Asian market. Next, add 10 grams of soy sauce and 20 cranks of some fresh black pepper, a sprinkle of onion powder, a sprinkle of garlic powder, and a sprinkle of MSG before bringing that all together. 
And again, this sauce is a great make ahead option to store in the fridge. And this made enough for about two stir fries. So meanwhile, let's prep the other components. For the aromatics, I'm using the garlic and shallot. So slice the garlic cloves with vertical slits, then horizontal before finally going across into a mince. Then I did the same with one fourth of a shallot, slicing vertical and then across into a small dice. Now, starting with the vegetables, I like using a mix of yellow and red bell pepper for the aesthetic and just slice the peppers as thin as you can and then do the same with the red onion. And as I mentioned, really any vegetable will work here. Lastly, we have the protein. For the beef, any cut of steak will work. Some may be more tender than others. I happen to have a leftover flank steak from the steak sandwiches video, which is a leaner cut. So I just cut off a couple of chunks, 200 grams in total, then sliced across the grain into strips as thin as possible. And you really do want to get these as thin as you can so they are more tender when you go ahead and eat them. Add the sliced beef to a bowl along with two grams of salt, two grams of sugar, and 10 grams of Chinese black vinegar. You can skip the vinegar if you don't happen to have it. And all of this prep work actually only took 10 minutes. I do have the footage to prove it, but now we are ready to stir fry. Set a wok over high heat, and once hot, add a five gram drizzle of neutral oil around the pan. Quickly saute the aromatics for 45 seconds before coming in with those onions and peppers. Now, this is completely optional here, but for a little more smoky char flavor, I do like using a kitchen butane torch on these. It gives them that kind of singed taste that's really hard to get on a conventional stove compared to those massive burners they have in a Chinese restaurant. Remove the cooked veggies to a bowl and then let's let the beef sizzle. So add another 10 gram drizzle of peanut oil to the wok and once that's hot, toss in that sliced beef and let it sizzle and brown without moving. After two minutes, start moving it around. And the key to make the steak tender here is to not overcook it at this stage. We do still want it to be moist. So once the beef is cooked, add the vegetables back in along with 30 grams of that black pepper stir fry sauce and bring it all together to spread the flavors around. Let this cook for about a minute. And then lastly, add a splash of cornstarch slurry, which will help thicken everything up. Now, traditionally, this is kind of served as a hot plate, so it's still sizzling. Very similar to how you'd be served a sizzling plate of fajitas at a Mexican restaurant. In my case, I'm just in quick weeknight mode, so I'm just throwing this over top of some rice. Now, for this dish, including the cup of rice, the macros clock in at 612 calories and 30 grams of protein. Let's eat. I love how peppery this dish is. It's so good. This is one of those dishes where it's so like peppery and tingly. You just want to keep eating it really fast, kind of, kind of like I did. But again, really boils down to just making this sauce and then chop up some vegetables, beef, chicken, uh, different vegetables. Everything's going to work with this sauce. And then you can serve it over rice. You can kind of serve it in the more traditional way, which is the plate as you kind of will see if you check out the Chinese cooking demystified video, but a very valuable kind of stir fry sauce to know um, and one that I find just truly addictive. Of the three stir fries in this video, Pad CU makes God tier leftovers or in layman's terms, I'll eat them cold from the fridge. And Pad Siu is one of Thailand's most popular street foods and simply means fried with soy sauce. And in this version, I wanted a kind of healthier, high protein style. So I did that by using a larger ratio of chicken breast and broccoli compared to the noodles. And if you were to order this out, there would likely be twice as many noodles as those provide a lot of the bulk. But at home, you get to control your stir fry mission. So using the framework, these are our components. The sauce, we have our Pad Siu sauce. Our aromatics are going to be garlic and white pepper. The protein is chicken breast and egg. The vegetables are some baby broccoli or broccolini. And for our starch base, we have the classic rice noodles. For the sauce, I like to toss this into a squirt bottle with a label on it in the fridge because it basically lasts indefinitely. So set a bottle over a scale and the basic blueprint here is one part dark soy sauce, one part light soy sauce, one part oyster sauce, and one part sugar. And we actually covered this blueprint with this illustration in my newsletter, The Mouthful, a couple of months ago. So if you like this sort of thing, it comes out every Sunday morning, completely free. I'll leave a link below to sign up. 
Now you can adjust these sauce ratios up and down as needed. For me, I like adding 10 grams of fish sauce for a little funky umami kick. And I do recommend finding the dark soy sauce for this as this is what gives it that beautiful deep color. Now, if you only have the light stuff, that works fine too. Don't let it be a barrier to making this. For the aromatics, I have garlic, which in this case, I'm gonna be slicing into bigger pieces this time. And additionally, I have some white pepper. Now this is used in a variety of stir fries in different Asian cuisines and fried rice dishes. And if you don't have some, I do recommend grabbing some, but black pepper works too. For the vegetables, I have one bunch of broccolini that I chopped into pieces. And Chinese broccoli is probably the most classic for this dish, but remember, any vegetable works here. For the protein, I'm using eggs and chicken breast. So for those eggs, just crack two into a bowl and beat them up. And then for the chicken, I'm actually using some thinly sliced chicken that I've stored in the freezer from a couple of weeks ago. I showed this method in my why I cook frozen meat video where I lay this out thin in a freezer bag so I can pull this stuff out at a moment's notice. And what's great about this is you can actually get really nice browning without overcooking the chicken. It's kind of a game changer. Lastly, I have some rice noodles that are just soaking in hot water while I was prepping all of this stuff. To cook this, I do recommend stir frying everything separately and then combining these at the end. So I start with the egg. Set a wok over high heat and a little five gram drizzle of oil. And once that's hot, just pour in the beaten egg and kind of swirl it around the pan. This should make it nice and fluffy with little browning on the exterior. After 45 seconds, move that egg over to a bowl on the side. Add another five gram drizzle of oil and then toss in the sliced garlic along with the white pepper and let this saute for 30 to 45 seconds before coming in with that chopped broccolini. Let all of this cook down for about one to two minutes. And lastly, add a 10 gram squirt of that stir fry sauce to the broccoli and mix it in so it starts to season it separately before setting that aside and removing it from the wok as well. Add one final five gram drizzle of oil and toss in that frozen chicken and let it brown up on one side for about two minutes before flipping it over and there should be some nice browning on the exterior. Just like the broccoli, add a 10 gram squirt of the sauce to the chicken to season it, and it gives it that beautiful dark color from the soy sauce. Now, add the broccoli and cooked egg back to the wok along with the rice noodles that have been soaked according to the package. Mix everything together and let this fry up for about five to seven minutes to continue cooking the noodles until they are nice, soft, and chewy. And during this time, you can add a little more sauce, a touch of water if those noodles are taking a while to cook, and lastly, taste it. I like to add a final sprinkle of the white pepper right before serving to really let that aromatic pop. And this right here is one of my absolute favorites. This made two big serving and per servings, it clocks in at 608 calories and 52 grams of protein. It's late, I'm starving, getting into this one. just a big old bowl of protein, vegetables, noodles in a, you know, salty umami sauce. Like, like what's not to love about this? I love the texture of the noodles and at home, what's the best part is you can control the portions of how much protein, how much vegetables you're adding. You know, at a restaurant or maybe a, a Thai place, they're probably gonna give you a lot more noodles cause that's cheaper, but at home, you know, you can load it on with the chicken, the egg, the vegetables and make a, a pretty, you know, protein packed meal. And for me, I don't need to use a ton of oil to make it taste good. You can fry it in more oil as you're stir frying if you do want to, but I think I only used about 15 grams total for, you know, two big servings of this, um, you know, kind of Pad CU inspired, uh, inspired dish. And yeah, this is just another incredible stir fry that everyone should know how to make. But lastly, let's move on to stir fry number three, which is probably the easiest of them all. And, one that can be made even with frozen vegetables, frozen meats, and is perfect for any weeknight. I'm gonna finish this. Whether it's your favorite store-bought one or a homemade one like I'll show you, everybody should have teriyaki sauce in their fridge. This sauce is traditionally used to baste and grill meat and seafood, but it's also great for adding to any vegetable and proteins in a stir fry. So for this one, our sauce is the teriyaki. Our aromatics are garlic and ginger, but I'm gonna be adding them directly to the sauce in this case. 
Our pro team is some braised beef, vegetables, snow peas, and then our starchy base is some ramen noodles. Teriyaki sauce is another ratio-based sauce made primarily with soy sauce, mirin, and sake, and optionally some sugar. And we covered this one in our newsletter three months ago as well. So set a bowl over scale and add one part or 100 grams of soy sauce, one part or 100 grams of mirin, one part or 100 grams of sake, and then optionally, you can add one part or 100 grams of sugar at this point if you know you like your teriyaki on the sweeter side, but for me, I actually like to add my sugar later on to kind of dial it in. Now, for the aromatics, I'm using garlic and ginger. However, instead of frying them in the wok like we did in the earlier two recipes, we're gonna be incorporating them directly into the sauce. So for this, I thinly sliced two cloves of garlic and thinly sliced a knob of ginger before adding those to a mortar and pestle. Then I mashed that up into a ginger garlic paste, crushing all those cell walls to expose and capture that flavor in our sauce. Once all the sauce components are ready, set a pot over medium heat and add a five gram drizzle of oil and toss in the garlic ginger paste and let that saute for about a minute during which those flavors will start to infuse into the oil. After a minute, pour in the soy sauce mirin sake mixture and let that come to a simmer and let this cook for about six minutes or so during which it will slightly reduce. Lastly, add the cornstarch slurry, which will begin to thicken it. And I like to add this in kind of batches at a time until it gets to my preferred thickness. And if it looks kind of thin, remember this will thicken as it does cool. Lastly, taste the sauce. And here's where I like to add a spoonful of sugar or two. I don't like my teriyaki super sweet, so I'd rather add it at the end here. Let this sauce cool before pouring it into your squirt bottle. And now you have this weapon ready to go at a moment's notice. So for the vegetables, I just bought some snow peas, I washed and then cut them in half. And for the protein, I'm using braised beef that I have in my freezer. Again, this is from my why I cook frozen meat video, truly a lifesaver for weeknight meals. Lastly, for my starch base, instead of rice, I went for some of these high protein ramen noodles, which I had in my pantry. And these are around 400 calories and 26 grams of protein per brick of noodle. I'll have a link to these in the description if you wanna check them out. But now let's stir fry. Add a five gram drizzle of oil to the wok over high heat. And I tossed in the snow peas along with a little sprinkle of salt and fried those for one minute. Next, I came in with the frozen beef and this is completely cooked already. It just needs to be thawed and heated. So I kind of coat the peas around it to speed up that process and break up the meat with a spatula. Once broken up, I come in with the cooked noodles and start adding squirts of my teriyaki sauce. You can add as much as you want, depending on how saucy you want your noodles. And lastly, I like to add a sprinkle of black or white sesame seeds and then serve this one up. It comes together so fast by relying on our fridge, pantry, and freezer items. And this made two massive servings again. And lastly, I do like adding some pickled ginger here for a touch of acidity before devouring. This one right here really sums up the stir fry experience. You know, it's some ramen noodles that you keep in your pantry. It's some frozen braised meat that I made a couple of weeks ago. Pair that with some snow peas, whatever vegetables you have, and then teriyaki sauce. It can be homemade, it can be a store-bought one, whatever you wanna do. You know, add those aromatics in there and you're gonna have something really delicious. And you can control all these portions exactly like you want to. If you want more meat, if you want more vegetables, different kinds of meat, tofu, chicken, fish, whatever you want to, all kinds of vegetables. So that is really why stir frying and stir fry sauces really can just completely change how you approach weeknight meals. But anyway, the recipes for these three will be up on my website if you want to check them out exactly. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace, y'all.